Hey guys, so today I'll be showing you how to integrate Wapi with N8N and we're going to create a simple automated workflow. So we are here right now in Wapi and specifically in the agent we created in the previous video. If you haven't used Wapi before, I would highly suggest you guys go check that video out in order to see how to, you can even create a simple voice agent as soon as possible. In the, I tried to explain it in a very simple way and I hope you guys learned from that video or you guys will learn from that video. When we're creating voice agents, it's not also only about the voice, but it's also about the functionality of the voice agent. And with the help of N8N, we'll be able to give that fu uh, functionality to our voice agent. Because at the end of the day, you want it to be beneficial, be it to business or your own purposes. So let's go to N8N real quick. As you can see, I started here real quick something, but that's what you're gonna is gonna see at first. It's gonna be a simple canvas, and you're gonna see some buttons around here. It's active and active. It's whenever basically you wanna activate your workflow, share, save, and these two plus buttons. So every time you press on those, you create a node. Your workflow can consist of multiple workflows that create an automated workflow that uh, performs different kind of tasks and it can work with your voice agent side by side. We're going to start and I'm going to show you what trigger is. In our particular case, we're going to be using webhook trigger. And whenever you see this orange lighting sign, it means that it's a trigger. What trigger is? Think of it as a doorbell. So whenever someone rings a bell, rings the bell, it basically kind of assigns that the action is being performed and you have to react. That's when the trigger it goes off and reacts to a certain action. In our case, it's going to be a webhook trigger. Webhook trigger is more of a waiting kind of trigger. So basically, it waits for a specific action to be performed in order for it to go off. In our case, it's going to be the voice agent from our lobby. So we're going to take this URL and we're going to integrate it with our VAPI, uh, VAPI agent. So every time, whenever someone interacts with this voice agent, it means that the action has been performed, meaning that the trigger is going to go off. Whenever you create a webhook trigger, you're going to see test URL, production URL. In our case, it's going to be test, get, it depending on an HTTP method. In our case, we're gonna use post method. We have path, authentication, and we have response. In this case, we're gonna be using immediately, but you have different variations, and depending on the workflow you have, you'll have to have a different kind of response. Let's keep it simple and let's keep it immediately for now. Let's copy this URL go to the VAPI. I think I should have already pasted it here, but let's paste it another time and publish it. Publish means to save. Now let's go back. Let's get out of here, back to canvas. And if you look at the webhook, everything around it uh, is white and gray it means that it hasn't been activated and nothing has been performed so far. Let's test the workflow. Let's go to our VAPI dashboard and let's make this action happen. So our webhook right now is waiting for an action. Once the action happens, it's, it's going to get triggered. Talk to the assistant. Sarah with Orlando Clean Pro. Who do I have pleasure? You can see that the task has been performed and everything is in green. Whenever it's in green, it means it's good. The operation, the workflow has been successfully um, automated and everything went well. Whenever something is red, it means that you have to fix and debug some issues in your workflow. And here, if you press on your webhook, let's, you're going to ha have data. Data here comes in in table, JSON, and schema formats. This data can be very useful when you create different chain of events that's going to be happening in your workflow. And you can take this 
data from one node and transfer it to another node in order for it to read the information from the previous steps. Let's go back and now let's get and create a simple automations that I want to show you today, guys. Let's delete. Well, so let's imagine a simple case. We have an agent. In our case, it's going to be our cleaning service agent. And we have a Google Sheet where we keep track of uh, potential clients. We have their contact information and in this contact information, we have their name and number. Whenever someone adds a new row in our Google Sheet with a new contact information that could be a potential lead, we want our VP agent to contact them and talk to them and maybe get them interested in cleaning services. In this case, let's go back and I'll show you something real quick. This is uh, going to be the Google Sheet we'll be using. We'll be adding some information here for name and number. But in this workflow, we'll be mainly working with the numbers. Let's add the first step. Google Sheet. Google Sheet trigger has three type of trig three types of triggers on row added, on row updated, on row added or updated. In our case, we're going to be using on row added because we want to see new contact information that we will be potentially calling on row added. And first, you're going to see credential to connect with. Nowadays, it's very simple. All you have to do is create new credential and you'll sign in with the Google account you want to be you'll you'll want to use for this kind of uh, automation automated workflow. Let's close. And if you remember when I was talking about the webhook trigger, that kind of trigger was more of a waiting trigger. It waits for an action to happen. This one is more of a checking trigger. We have poll times and we have mode. So, let's say we add seven numbers within one day. If we put every every day, every 24 hours, for example, it's going to go check for new information every 24 hours in your Google Sheet, and it's going to give a call to the seven numbers. If you put every minute and you have a lot of contact information coming in in this Google Sheet, it's going to go check this uh, Google Sheet every minute and going to give a call to the people you added within that minute. So for now, we're going to keep it every minute. And document, we're going to be using an eight. And test, sheet is going to be sheet number one. And trigger on row added. Let's test the event and see if uh, it's connected well and everything was, works. As you can see, number, name. We don't have a lot of data there, so we should be good. Let's add my name and some random integers. And let's test. You remember we have table, JSON, schema. We can see we have more information coming in, so everything should be working and uh, set with the Google Sheet trigger. The next uh, node we will be using is going to be set fields or edit fields. We have mode, manual mapping, JSON, and fields to set. Basically, this is uh, this node is making our information more readable for the next steps in our workflow. Because sometimes it can read the information or not. For example, if I put if I put nothing in the number, it's gonna read it well. If I, if I'm gonna put letters. It's going to read, but if I'm going to put number, it might not read in our next step, which is going to be if node. So we want to put the number here and no, this is going to be the name number. And this is going to be our JSONs that we're going to include in here and create and make it a string. You, you will understand more in the, in the next node i'll try to get more in depth with what i talked about right now so let's add if node if node it's more like a checkpoint 
we're gonna since we're gonna be using Google Sheet and we're gonna be calling potential leads, we don't want to call any numbers that has maybe a wrong number. In our case, we're gonna filter them and sort them by structure. So since we're in the US, we want to call numbers that start with plus one, and every number that doesn't start with plus one and ha or has wrong structure, we don't want to call that number. Basically, not letting it pass through the checkpoint. And the numbers that starts with a plus one, we're gonna let it pass through the checkpoint. So let's go back to whatever I was talking about the edit fields. Whenever I would pass this kind of, let's say, number, it would it uh, it would give me a mistake because it would expect it to have plus one with it together, but making it a string makes it easier to read. Hey, listen, plus one is not here. So it's more like for formatting kind of purposes, meaning that it will make everything pass through if not much easier and smoother. So let's put number and let's go to the string since we put it as a string and contains plus one. Because we want to work with the numbers, so contain plus one and start with plus one in order for WAPI to make a call. Let's test the step. It worked because none of our numbers start with plus one. We go to the false branch and we have numbers that doesn't start with a plus one. Let's put the random numbers that starts with a plus one and see if it works or not. Sam, plus one, six, eight, nine, four, five, six, three, eight, six, seven. And let's test the step. Oh, we have to test the Google Sheet trigger because it wasn't reading the information. Google Sheet trigger didn't read the new information. We can see that three items that we have in our Google Sheet trigger went through edit fields and went to the field if node and one item went to the true branch, which would be safe to assume was the one that started with plus one, meaning that our if node is also set and good to go now. Now we're going to be making an HTTP request. Numbers that don't match our structure, we're just going to miss through them. And the numbers that match our data, we want to give them a call. Let's do HTTP request. It's the easiest way to think about the HTTP request. It's kind of like a sending, me sending a message or ordering a mobile order, basically order and the information gets to the restaurant. In our case, we're gonna give an order to WAPI to perform some sort of a task. Something important to note here real quick, that can be very useful and helpful to a lot of people that will be using WAPI in the future, is to use WAPI documentation. In our case, we wanna create a call, we wanna give a call to someone, depending on the numbers they have. If we go to WAPI documentation and API reference, we have list calls, post, create call, get call, delete call data, and a bunch of other functions. If you go to create call, you can see all the data here that we have to basically input in our HTTP request and everything is gonna go smooth and work. It looks a bit scary, but trust me, once you know what to look for, it's gonna be pretty easy and just copy and paste after that. So let's go back to the Google Sheet trigger workflow. And the method we're gonna, method we're gonna be using is gonna be post. Because if you go back, you can see it's post. Let's copy this URL and let's go back. And you can see, we can just paste it here. If you go here, you can see we have two headers, authorization bearer and your API key, and then there is a uh, content type application JSON. So let's just copy it and paste it in a header name. Value is going to be our bearer plus API key. Bearer space. And let's go find our API key real quick. So you're going to go here, API keys, and you would want to copy. and paste it here. Then 
let's not forget we have content type application JSON. So let's go back. Content type. And it's going to be application JSON. The, the best way to think about headers, the way I think about it, imagine you have a package and you know, when you have a package, you have uh, labels on them in order to, un to see where it goes. That's what basically it is. Well, we have a package and we know where to go, where to send this information. It's going to be mappy. N now everything should be set and now we're going to send the body. The body is more what the package contains basically what we're going to send to what to work with in order to make this, uh, to create a call. So in order to create a call, we will need phone number ID. The, the um, it can be the numbers you bought from Twilio or the number you bought from WAPI or any, anywhere else. In our case, I'm going to be using the number I bought in WAPI as well as your assistant ID. So WAPI can see, Hey, listen, he wants to use this assistant that he created for YouTube um that specializes in clinic services and it wants to have the customer number which is going to be the numbers that pass through if node not any other number but the ones that pass through if node because if you're going to choose the google shit trigger it's going to be calling non-existent numbers basically not creating call and giving you a mistake so for people who doesn't know how to code or anything else something that you almost forgot specify body is going to be using json you can just basically go to ChatGPT, and nowadays you don't have to code that much and know how to code. What I said, give me a JSON that provides phone number ID, assistant ID, customer number, JSON number, basically in this structure. And it gave me in a polished structures that I can just copy and paste right here. We can basically real quick do this, remove that one and just paste the number that we got from the if node. Let's find now phone, phone number ID. That's the number I'm gonna be using. And assistant ID. Let's go to the assistant. Basically letting know, hey, this is the number you're gonna be using, Wapi, and this is the assistant I'm gonna be using. This is the test for YouTube. Let me see if that one was the one we were using for this video. Yeah, my agents are a bit a mess right now. But yes, you can find your assistant ID right here. Copy assistant ID, go back and paste it right here. Now everything should be set. I'm going to go back to the Google Sheets that we'll, uh, we were using for this workflow. And I'm just going to substitute Sam with my number uh, and my real name so it can give me a call. So I input my phone number and my contact information in NA10 test, Google Sheet. And now let's put it to the test and see if we're going to get a call or not. Let's press the test workflow. Here's my phone. As you can see, everything is in green and we're getting a call. Let's hear our agent. This is Sarah with Orlando Clean Pro. Who do I have pleasure speaking with? You can uh, you can hear this is the agent we created in the previous video, meaning that everything worked and uh, the workflow was automated correctly. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, just comment down below and I'll get to you. I'm going to be posting more videos in the future and I'm going to go more in depth with the automations that I created. Hope you enjoyed it and have, have a wonderful day wherever you guys are.